Hello and welcome to the Late Challenge podcast with him, Gareth Roberts, and me, Paul Cope, from Jacob's Crematorium, as always. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get stuck straight in this week. None of the other nonsense going on because we want to get stuck into the Crunching Challenge. I want to get stuck into the Crunching Challenge, which is our weekly crisp battle, basically. And going back to last week's, for those of you who are following along, and I've lost again. I've gone from 1-0 up to 2-1 down in the space of a couple of weeks. Get in. Um, so, <laughs> so Kettle, Cheddar and Onion got 43.2% of the vote and King Cheese and Onion from Ireland, which is crucial, that last bit I said then, got 56.8% of the vote. And I'll give it to you this week. There were 762 votes because you did bring him on board the entirety of Ireland almost. Right. The, in fact, someone even tried to... They, I didn't actually get onto who the... The, the Prime t- Minister. Was it the Prime Minister? The, the Prime Minister, or the, <laughs> the, the, the how would you say it, Taoiseach. Yeah. Um, yeah, Atted him and said, uh, this is of a, a vital national, national importance. importance. <laughs> yeah, so, so get involved. Um, so yeah, are you pleased pleased with your win? Very pleased, 2-1 up now, aren't I? Um, and, you know, I'm I'm confident going into the next round. I, th- I think one of my mates said that maybe, like all, all the ones that win through in each of these rounds, when we sort of like were running, I was a crisp. Said, you know, you should do like a bit of a World Cup with the ones that made it through. And, you know, like do a draw, uh, have a knockout phase and all that that people vote for. And then eventually, we you know, we can crown a certain bag of crisps, the late, the late challenges, um, number one crisp. Yeah, I like the idea of that. Yeah, I like yeah. the idea of that. But, but well, but I want to I want to set some ground rules first. Because oh, here we go. Th- so so this is the thing. I knew I'd lost last week. <laughs> Literally <laughs> the second that Robbo said they're Tory them crisps. As soon as you uttered those words, I was like, he has done me. And it is funny that this this show is called the Late Challenge Podcast because that was like a proper. I felt the two footed challenge go yes. through my knees, and I was like, I'm done there. I can't walk. I was I was doing the job there. The subs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was t- even when I watched it back, I was like, I'm desperately trying to recover there. I'm scrambling to recover. But as soon you as even went on, that- you went on, you went on Twitter and everything, didn't you? Saying like, you know, don't listen to Gara. You even had uh, what were they called? Kettle that you had, didn't well, you? I tried when they I saw you recruited weren't they? the entirety of Ireland and almost the Prime Minister. I tried to get kettle chips, or crisps on board because they they actually did reply they to tweeted, someone yeah. who, who t- replied to and us. to you. And to me, yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't quite get them on the hook, do you know what I mean? I wanted them to get on. They haven't got a huge account, 15,000 followers or something, but, it was, but I, I wanted to try and it didn't quite get there. But this is the thing I wanted to say, because this is a perfect example of what I knew would happen as soon as Robbo said that. Paul Brooks tweeted, don't like cheese and onion crisps, to be honest, but voted for Robbo's King crisps, as there's no fucking way I'll ever vote anything Tory. That includes Kia fucking Starmer, which I mean, I think is quite harsh, but that's, that's one for another show. And that's exactly what I knew would happen as soon as you said that. Was he doesn't even like cheese and onion crisps, but he's voting against Tories because you've labelled them Tory. And it was funny because we said, this is a serious point now. As we were leaving the show, I said to Robbo, do you know what's mad? And this is a risky thing to say, but we said when we started this, we're going we're gonna to say what we want to say. This is a risky thing to say from the city we're from. Um, for, if you're from outside of England, by the way, and you don't know this, calling someone a Tory is... A sl- it's a slang term for conservative, but especially in places like Liverpool, it's like the worst insult you can give anyone, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking to myself during the weekend, I meant to check this with you. Like, where do you stand on us saying, saying the C word on this show? Do you know what I mean? Because it's, I mean, we I started off the, the whole thing causing trouble. It, I don't do mind. Beyond- I, mean, I, I don't mind. I mean, we, you know, you, I've dropped it in on, on other podcasts, I think, including this one. And I've been called it all this weekend by one of my exes. So, you know, like, I'm, 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 I love that. One of your exes. Like, they're all lining up. They're I mean, all lining this, up. Yeah. yeah. Like, 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 with the, you know, like, like on airplane where they all give that woman her uh, bash around the shops because she's chatting shit. Or, I know she's saying she's sick, isn't she? But yeah, like, a bit like that. Yeah. All, all, all cute. No, to be fair, it's, it's just one who's uh, deciding that I'm, I'm, I'm the C word if we're, if we're saying that this well, week. Well, I mean, this, is, this isn't even in the agenda, but I, love, I do love the way certain words have like, you can say just the letter that they start with and everyone knows what you mean. See you next do Tuesday. You know I mean? And all it's of the, that. Like, that, that's, that's rare that a word gets to that grand level, isn't it? I well, reckon other words like, are like, hang on. Is it, 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 it's um, Jerry Cinnamon, isn't it? Like, um, there's a lyric which I can't remember properly, but it's along the lines of he says like you know he's, he's singing about Glasgow, obviously where he's from and everything, 
and he says he says along the lines of in a, in a much better way that rhymes etc that you know it, that's a place where it's a it's a term of endearment so, yeah, yeah, sort yeah. of thing yeah. um and and liverpool's probably like you know in in a similar bracket i think like you know like we'll use it shall we for a for a second um you know if you've got kids in the car etc um you know maybe maybe jib this bit but yeah you know you'll go or I still routinely go like if someone does something dozy you go oh you're soft cunt you're soft cunt yeah and, and like that's not meant partially at all whereas it's seen as like the ultimate swear word almost isn't it it's like you know you've got to like to use that yeah you've got to be really riled but no you can say it where your mate's being daft yeah bro. And, and, and it sounds it's funny you should say that because like I don't know I've done a lot of traveling over the past few years and the number of times and I've got this vivid memory of like chatting to an American girl when I was in Mexico a couple of years ago and I was literally talking like that like Joe, I told her I went to I said called her a soft cunt or a silly cunt at one point and then and also oh. and also just went to her during the middle of a conversation I said oh fuck off and she went to me, she was like, fuming. More, but it was, she wasn't fuming, she was mortified. She was like, I can't believe, like, she went, we only met two hours ago and you've just told me to fuck off. And I was like, oh, where I'm from, that's like a really nice thing to say to someone. Who, <laughs> it's a sign that I like you. Do you know what I mean? And so anyway, all that aside, if you call someone a Tory, it's worse than that, <laughs> basically. And as we left the studio, I said to Rob, I'm going to say this on the show. And I was actually surprised Robo, Robo agreed with me. I thought we were going to have a debate about it. But I went, do you know what? I'm not into this whole, like, just slagging off Tories as a whole and being like, oh, that's Tory and they're Tories. Because... I don't think it helps any of us. Like we've, this, you'll see this. I mean, you've already seen this on these shows already. You'll see this as a pattern going on. I'm not a fan of the establishment. I'm not a fan of like the people who are trying to control us. And for me, this goes back to like the Roman Empire days of divide and conquer. And someone wants to decide that they're going to draw a line in the sand and on one side is the right and on one side is the left. You're, you're Tory or you're Labour, you're Republican, you're Democrat. And then we just hate each other. Everyone's like, you, you, we can't like you because you're a conservative, you're a Tory, we don't like you because you're Labour. And it's bullshit, like to the extent that we're not voting for things because someone called them a Tory crisp. So I say this, I say in the past I'd have gone, do you know what? They're not Tory crisps, I'd have, I've, I'd, I'd have argued against it. But I'm, like, I'm saying no now, I'm saying if they're Tory crisps, fine, bring your mature cheddar, Tory hand-cooked crisps and we'll bring our space raiders and monster munching quavers and finger licking knick-knack nonces and we'll let's let's heal the divide let's use our love of crisps together to heal the divides we've got in these in these in our nations in this world let's bring down the cost of living crisis because together we're stronger we're more alike than we're not alike robo this is the Why thing you got beat <laughs> do you know what do you know what's dead funny i was gonna write on a piece of paper lad you got beat because i knew that's what you'd say even if i went into all of this and like was like let's unite behind these crisps you just feel like lad you got beat lad, you got off. beat too but i did, I uh, did the line from cinnamon by the way uh, for anyone that's interesting is i've been all around the world there's no way where that compares to my hometown the mayhem of glasgow is buried deep in my blood and there's no other place where a cunt might not be a put down um, and nice I, line. I like that that line always resonates every time I hear it because I'm like, well, you know, he, he is the same, isn't it? I mean, Glasgow, I reckon, is even harsher than here for that. But yeah, like, I've got a theory on this, you know, I, I, and it links back to a uh, damage by the war and what it what it does to places. Because I I think Liverpool, Newcastle, Glasgow. I remember asking my dad this once, and I was like, did they just randomly once did they all get damaged a lot in the war? And he went, yeah. I was like, and I remember chatting with Gail again on my travels. He was from uh, Lebanon. And she said a similar thing. She, she said, oh, your attitude to life very much like people from Beirut who've lived through war. Wow. And I was like, oh, but it makes sense when you think about it. Because if you live through like bombing, lots of bombs and stuff like Joe R. City did in World War II, you people develop a just live for today mentality. And that type of like mentality bleeds into this type of humour and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Dark mm -hmm. humour. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose like, you know, things like sticking a gunboat in the Mersey uh, to intimidate the residents of the city, you know, by the government, uh, you know, things like that will matter as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that'll do something, won't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, look, I, I, so 
this is this is a thing. I think Robbo after after losing week one, and he was surprised. I think he was surprised to lose week one with your Space Raiders. I thought you thought that was a nailed on thing. I, I think did. he's compromised his principles. I've had people saying to me all week, you, you should have gone salt and vinegar. If you go salt and vinegar, win. But I don't like salt and vinegar crisps. So I, I do I, like I, cheese and onion though, so I'm not, com- I'm not compromised. Uh, yeah, but you went for an Irish crisp that you knew you'd get the Irish vote from. Well, yeah, I, I just wanted to win. Don't <laughs> get me wrong. <laughs> I know, I know um, you did. You know, win at all costs, like, you know what I mean? Like uh, someone did put in what, one of the comments I saw somewhere along the way in the last week or so, competitive much. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, mate. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of that. I am. I am. I, I don't. I think there's there's this thing, isn't there? There's a line and all that, but healthy competitiveness is good for us. Yeah, like, like I, I have to be honest. I do not want to be going through one down, and I'm annoyed with myself because I've, I've had I've had a rough weekend, and I didn't get organised, and I didn't buy the crisps I wanted. I'd I'd picked out the crisps I wanted, which I thought were nailed on winners this week, and I went to the shop on the way in, and they didn't, didn't have, have them. them, and I was furious with myself because you should have prepped. I should have prepped. And they're the type of crisps that you don't get in every shop. Do you know oh. what I mean? So I've I've cocked up a bit, but let's get into it. Let's let's do this Go week's ahead. and then we'll move on. What have you got? I've I've gone with I've gone with one that was on my list anyway, and I've gone back to um, me tried and test me t- oh, tried wow. and tested. Um, you and your cheese. I know. I knew you were going to say <laughs> that as well. Like this is we're going to be able to do each other's bits on know, this soon. Yeah. I'm, I've gone for cheesy watsits because they're just they're just classics do you know what I mean and they are good I, do you know what I've started doing which I'd never done before because I didn't know crisps did this until you started reading them out they've all got a little bit on they've them got a little they? story so we are on, are you a cruncher or a melter are you a what's it's fan would you I would yeah, say I like you were a what's it's person to be fair. although and, uh, I, like I'm not sure about them being baked yeah, is that a new thing? Uh, it's to 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 give, so it, to to give the idea that, that it's somehow healthy. I don't I want love, it to be healthy. I know. I don't like this. Whole, but it's bullshit anyway, isn't it? Like, I love it when they do that. No, like, no. When they, like, you can buy a bag of cookies and they'll say, like, a little mini bag of cookies and it'll say, like, only 99 calories. And you're like, that's because you've only put three cookies in the yeah. bag, lads. Or the cookies <laughs> but, are tiny. Yeah. yeah. You put, put more cookies in and it wouldn't be, it's not a healthy tra- snack, is it? But it says, um, are, you a, are you a cruncher or a melter? Do you like do you like to nibble those smooth round edges or let them gently dissolve in your mouth? Or maybe you live life on the edge, start off with melting and then take a bite. However you snaffle a what's it, it's always deliciously cheesy. So, so don't be saying they, they're like feet because they're not No, they're feet. not at all, right? I, no, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, fine, I'm fine with what's it. I've got nothing disparaging to say about them other than they're another one like the knickknacks where you've got to be careful where you're eating them. I don't think well, they're we've already pub- covered that, haven't we? The, the, the crowd love that. not public transport. Yeah, Chris, as far as I'm concerned. My Chris, before I tell you what they actually are, the story on mine is, is really simple. Uh, it just says, boldly satisfying. Oh wow! That's it. I'm intrigued. There's no story. There's Go no on. backdrop. Just boldly fucking satisfying. They're, they're like. fucking confident crisps, yeah. them aren't they? So they are. Boom. Flame grilled steak McCoy's. I knew, I knew they'd be on your list. <laughs> <laughs> they're, a, they're a Robo crisp if ever there was one. Fucking aren't right. They? Full on flavour. Yeah. Ridge cut. Um, I I think. I think they'll go down well with the crowd. Um, you know what's really funny about doing this Chris thing as well? I mean, we were saying just before we started, weren't we, that, you know, like the feedback you get from doing something like this, you'll always get people, and we're going to talk about feedback perhaps later in the show, aren't mm-hmm. we, more generally. You, you'll get like a broad spectrum from everything, like it's the shittest thing I've ever heard, so it's the best and everything in between. I think the Chris thing's really funny because like people like who were probably like close to me, like, you know, like, you know, best friends and things like that. And I've gone like, oh yeah, I've listened to the podcast and it seems to be doing well. Nice one, lad, and all that. And then, and then every, it's like to a man, pretty much of all gone, not sure about the fucking Chris you've been picking up. <laughs> fucking what about, you know, X? Seeing Steve Warnock said exactly the same, you know, seeing him outside the match the other day and he was like, fucking Chris, the period is a picking. Yeah, he had to pop at me for and Quavers. Like, I was like, fuck off, Quavers are fucking boss. But that's why it's good, isn't it? Yeah. That's why it's good to talk about the Chris because everyone has got an opinion this on the, the Chris. This is the thing. So I'm intrigued I, to I think see where gonna, this goes. I, I honestly, I reckon this is going to start a, like a, a whole movement in the, in the country and probably worldwide. I hope so. About we can you know, we can bring everyone together because all of a 100%. sudden instead of like being divided by politics and colour of our skin and gender and all this, we will be able to we're go all crisp, what crisps. We're all what crisp crisps. Do you like them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We all love I, I'm like we should come together and enjoy crisps again. You know what I mean? I feel like they've had a bad press. What do you mean, like in parties? Like, yeah, I just think, no, I just think, like, you know, like we just talked about, we just touched on it. Like, the scene is unhealthy. Oh, yeah, They're not yeah, part yeah. of that lifestyle. You know, you're not going to read a Sunday Times magazine article about why crisps are great, are you? But you might see 
see something on Lab Bible, and it's like, well, why why is it being pushed to that you know periphery? Crisps are great. Yeah, the staple. I just bumped into someone in Tesco just now. We've always started the show. He's doing four classes a week to stay fit. He looks fantastic, and he was like, I'm just getting myself a meal deal, and he was there picking his crisps. Yeah. They're a staple part of society. 100%. And yet, you know, they pushed underground as though they're like some bad drug. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love it. We're talking about what? It's like that crack. <laughs> it's like cat that lad. Well, like, like Brannigan's, uh, what is it? Brannigan's roast, roast beef and mustard, is it? I think. Oh, yeah? um, there's been, Matt's been going on about it to us. Um, we've had loads of other people mentioning it as well. You can't get them anymore for some reason. Like people, a lot of people seem to like them, but they don't sell them I anymore. I hate when that happens. Have we talked about this already? Like, so this could be underground. This thing where, like, if I, if I, sometimes is there a way to I get like them? Come we, can, we can deal them. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> is that how we're going to make our fortune? <laughs> Fuck a subscription model. They're like, how do those lads keep running all these podcasts? They're, Bran- Bran- they're Bran- selling Chris on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Right, anyway. There's enough of that. We're, we're going to do Robbo's Fact of the Week, right? Which is oh, turned yeah. into a section in itself because um, we've we've got to do before we go into this week's fact, which has got pressure on it now after the last couple of weeks. And and I think you have been hitting them off the park, to be fair. Uh, we've had some feedback on the biggest clock in the country. I mean, a couple of people got in yeah. touch. Did you see the ones, a couple of people tweeted to say like, in fairness, lad, Stonehenge and that clock. So, uh, oh, no, I'm not having I mean, like, oh, fuck Come off. on. Yeah. yeah. Let's not have that. But... We did get an email from Amanda who said, uh, good morning, this isn't a case of Cockney versus Scouse one-upmanship. Obviously when people start with sort of like that, isn't it? Like, so it is then. Yeah, so it is, yeah. <laughs> um, because that would be petty. But I'm compelled to bring to your attention that the clocks on the Liver building aren't the largest in the country. That honour goes to the clock on the Shell Mex building, which we're going to get into in a minute, which is 7.6 metres in diameter, a whopping 0.02 metres bigger than the Liver clocks. I'm hopeful that in the interest of journalistic integrity, you'll offer both a correction and a full apology to the good people of London for your reporting of fake news on episode three of the Late Challenge podcast. I, I love this line now because it's someone who knows Robbo. The, she just says, I know Robbo, I won't fuck off. Fuck so, off. So thank you, Amanda. Um, but that led us to, led to us digging into it, didn't it? And having mm-hmm. a little look at ourselves. Shit. Yeah, it's so absolutely go on. shite. Take, on so for the building it's on looks like the live buildings when it's let itself go. Like when it's when it's like took early retirement and it's just sitting eating McCoy's all day. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a fat live of buildings. And then the clock shit. It's like it's like these it's like someone's got super glue and like stuck things onto onto the side of the building. Those of you watching on YouTube can see it on the telly. Yeah, look at it, it's fucking crap. It's just like blobs. And then like, you know, the hands and whereas like, you know, the live buildings are amazing. Like it's a proper piece piece of like, you know fantastic work basically mm. by skilled men and that thing the shell builds i mean look at the fucking kipper that he was asked about that I know. and well, also well, as well thing. i i started like you know as i do you know we're talking about journalistic integrity amanda um i you know then started googling around it desperate to prove that this was not the case and it seems it seems that it's pretty contentious. And I always think, well, you know, if you're going to make claims like this, you know, you should be looking for more than one source, shouldn't yeah, you? Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I found a fella saying um, that Big Ben, uh, sorry, B- the biggest clock, blah blah blah, shower. But he he said that the Liver Building was bigger than the Shell Mac. So the, it, it's a little bit disputed. It's still in dispute. But, yeah. but I found Hidden Liverpool, uh, who just sort of tweet about hidden Liverpool things. Mm. And they said, much dispute about the size of the Shellmax clock face compared to that of the Liver building. But the major consensus is that the Shellmax one is ever so slightly larger. And then he says, but as far as I'm concerned, the moot point numbers stuck on a wall aren't really a clock face. Fucking widget all the all the way there, hidden. Hidden's nailed it. Yeah, I think so. And and I, I looked up the history of the of the shit because it, you know, it's called Shell Max building, so I thought is that we, we shell of we talk about shell every show now which i didn't expect before it's a Tory uh, building isn't it? yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> hey, fucking tories <laughs> fucking burn it down but um, but it was like the history of the building was for many years the london headquarters of shell mex and B, bp for which it was originally built blah 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 and i did think to myself because when you found that i was like yeah someone else said um 
like it's it's not a, the, the Shell Max one isn't a proper clock face. The live building clock face is a proper clock face is made of metal and opaque glass. There you go. So they they are the biggest in the UK. And I was thinking, well, well, you think, and I, I know thirty two billion was what they made this year, Shell, but they've always made a few quid, haven't they? They've always done well. Mm. You think they could have been asked to put a proper Better clock on their that. own building? So fuck off. It's like a Timex fucking clock exactly. or something. You know, I just sort of crap. absolutely shite. Nah, it's out of a plazy egg. Though. So yeah, so we're not having that basically <laughs> out of a plazy egg. <laughs> so do you want me fuck for this week then? Well, it, uh, no. Let's. I want. I just want to do these other the, the rest of Amanda's thing. Oh yeah, and, go on. and the other bit you want to throw in. So this is just to, just to to round off. We we did we liked oh, Amanda's the email. Yeah. Um, so just to add into the bog stuff from previous weeks and shitting shitting and pissing, which is another topic I didn't expect to be so big on our podcast. When you first said to me, do you fancy doing a podcast, mate? But but I'm liking it. Um, Amanda's email went on to say on a far less, far less serious note several years ago she was at White Hart Lane Tottenham Hotspurs old stadium it was a Sunday and a match day kickoff was lunchtime and I was there early doors while waiting in reception there was a sudden flurry of urgent activity with men in high vis jackets bursting in and speaking urgently into their walkie talkies I could only hear snippets of conversation <laughs> I was thinking before I came in today we, we said before we started this show I don't know whether you know this me and Rob are actually absolutely brilliant at accents aren't we <laughs> So, like I, I was saying to him before we started, we whenever someone writes in, we should like do, we should do the accent. We need someone from Manchester to write in. Yeah, well, I'll, I might just make one up. If it, or if you're from Manchester, you listen, to right. just write in so Robo can give you his impression. Um, but I'll do my, I'll do me cockney. I could only hear snippets of conversation. I can't even do it now. Do you know when, do you know when your brain goes, where's your in? It's blocked. I fucking told him before about this. He'll be here in half an hour. It's got to be sorted before then. Where the fuck is Phil? We need him now. But it was clear something drastic had happened that needed to be sorted. <laughs> Double lively, which is a pure Cockney expression. Isn't it? Before too long, it was apparent that Sam had taken a dump. And that'll be the last thing the cunt does on this site. Fuck him off now. On Daniel Levy's private loo and blocked it, causing a mass meltdown among the maintenance team. Sadly, I don't know how the story concluded. But I think that's good enough, isn't it? Like yeah, blocking it's Daniel Levy's private toilet on. Didn't um, in the ground. Robbie Savage have a poo on the rest toilet once, famously as well? Oh yeah, I remember I think that, that story. Was a, that was a story once upon a time. What was that at half time? What? Can't remember the details of it. It's just come to me then as we as we were talking because I'm, I'm I'm wondering where this you know this feature will continue to go. Um, I think it'll just turn into the entirety of the pod at some point. Or yeah, maybe we'll we'll just have to do like you know uh, shitting I, forecasts. I mean, I it? have got. I'm, I don't know whether you've got. I've got. I reckon three of my favourite stories from my life of all time. One about me and two about friends are about shitting. Everyone's got, yeah. And I think if you haven't got a, got a good story. shitting story, you need Everyone's to get one, one, don't you? Everyone's got one. Yeah. Uh, I did like as well, we also had sent in, um, you know, anonymously it was, about someone who, uh, I think it was at Goodison Park. Um, <laughs> so they, they, they must have been in like the boxes or something like that. And they, they saw... Um, what, you're revealing names here, Jacob, when it's anonymous, lads. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I, anonymously it was sent to us. Yeah, saw uh, that in the edit. Um, Jeff Hurst, having a Jeff Hurst, um, which for those that don't know, again, we're, we're willing to explain Scouse culture for those who aren't from here. Um, I'm sure it's elsewhere as well, isn't it? It's a burst. Um, I, I'm just going for a Jeff Hurst, lad. So Jeff Hurst, having a Jeff Hurst. It raised the chuckle for me. Yeah, I, I liked it, but I, the other thing I thought was, I wonder how often Jeff Hurst is having a wee. And he can just send someone taking a photo of him so they can send the picture to the mate Seen of Jeff Hurst having a bit. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And, he'd be like, and he finishes and thinks, oh, fuck off, lads. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I'm sick of this, you scouse bastards. So your secret's safe. Uh, Jacob's going to uh, yeah, edit out your blur, name blur on the video. Don't worry, if, don't, worry, don't worry if you're listening. Yeah. Uh, leave all um, the rest in Jacob at time. We like to sh- we like to show that we fuck up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so come on, let's let's have th- let's have this week's fact. See if oh you yeah. Can match so this week's, week's fact. Oh yeah. So I, I mean, I read your agenda, and so I was feeling the pressure in terms of a, a really good one. Um, I've got other ones up my sleeve, so I thought, well, let's go. Let, I'm, I'm going to return to a bit of a tried and tested one that I have used elsewhere, but I'm not sure how many people will have knowledge of it. I think it will still come to as news to a lot of people that there was another Merseyside football club that played league football 
that you might not have heard, heard of. So, you know, you might be thinking, oh, is he going to say like Southport because they were in the fourth division once upon mm -hmm. a time? No. Uh, not Liverpool, Everton or Tranmere, obviously. No, uh, New Brighton Tower FC. New Brighton Tower FC? Yeah. When was this? See, here we go. So they were formed in 1896, only four years after Liverpool. They had a, a, a ground, they had a ground over on the Whittle with a capacity um, said to be between 80 and 100,000. 80 and 100,000? It had a an big athletics track around Fuck it. Fuck, you've made this up. I have not. And accompanied to the football club, there was a 189-metre tower modelled on the Eiffel Tower with a ballroom at the bottom of it. So that, that by the way, Where that tower... In New Brighton? In New Brighton. So this tower was bigger than the Blackpool Tower, bigger than the BT Tower in London, bigger than that Beetham Lego Tower thing in Manchester. Yeah. And at the time, the biggest tower in the country. Um, and and what the, the idea of it all was that the consortium behind it wanted to make New Brighton a year-round destination. So it was a pull for Victorians, obviously, uh, you know, being by the sea and a bit mm. of a resort and that kind of thing. They thought if they just build a footy club, the people will come type of thing. Um, and when was this? 18, so 1896 was the formation of the, of the club. Uh, by 1898... They were playing in the football league and they had loads of money behind them. And they basically just went out and bought like all the boss players. So it was like a sort of, you know, like an Abramovich type situation, only in Victorian times. Um, so they won the Lancashire League in their second season, were elected to the Football League in 1898, uh, taking their place in the newly expanded second division. And they were playing against like sort of Newton Heath, obviously later Manchester United. Yeah. They were playing against Woolwich Arsenal later Arsenal yeah. um, but they were getting shite attendances so they were getting like uh, on average less than a thousand some sometimes up to three thousand but you know it was it was obviously not working out people were not interested mm -hmm. they didn't feel, you know they, there wasn't that sort of ownership or the idea that it come up from some kind of like workers movement or anything like that you'd have with all the football clubs so so they resigned from the league in 1901 uh, and today there is no trace of the club or the ballroom or the tower, aside from a bit of grass over on that side that says the tower grounds. Uh, the rest of it's just a housing estate. Now, there are some, uh, you know, it's hard for us to do this on a podcast, but obviously you're listening, a lot of you and all that kind of thing. But I do genuinely urge you to go and Google it because there are some amazing pictures of both the tower, the ground, the ballroom, etc. All gone now. Uh, do you know what's mad? So again, for international and maybe even for national listeners like who aren't from around here, like New Brighton is a seaside place on basically on the Wirral Peninsula, which is across the River Mersey from where we are in Liverpool. And there's all kinds of like internal Merseyside stuff about uh, dark side and light side yeah, and all yeah, that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But that's, it's blown me away because I spend a lot of time over there now, obviously. And yeah. that's, that's not mm, far from you, is it? No. And it's mental. That Get that, yourself down there. What, like, Go and find the it, tower gardens. It's, and it's something that does my head in about our city, actually. In a, My dad used to hate all this stuff about... Do you, year has gone by when we had loads of boss stuff and it's just gone yeah like so they just knocked all that shit down like someone at some point just gone yeah just fucking knock that down well the ballroom you know, was the last surviving thing of all of that and i think that went in the 60s there was a fire and then you know that was the end of that basically uh yeah but the tower i think was um I, I'm, I'm sort of freestyling a bit here because i haven't got the internet password um i think it was early 1900s you know or, or say, no first world war time -ish, i think that came down but yeah i mean it, it sounds amazing doesn't yeah. it do you know what i mean like imagine, imagine that, that just over now. there i know yeah. i know and there's even been there's some lad who's done like a youtube on it and he goes to like the spot where it was and all that kind of stuff so i was briefly having a little watch of that and he mentioned i don't know who this is who's campaigning or pushed for it but he said there has been talk and pushes for and campaigns for the return of some kind of like tower over there because because new brighton's had a bit of a revival hasn't it, it it's it's sort of like on the up now isn't it yeah, and it's yeah, like it's i've it. had a bevy over there and mm -hmm. it's all right mm -hmm. and like you know it's a nice walk and, and i think property price, prices are starting to go up over there and it's becoming like a bit of a hipstery trendy ish place to go and live now certainly more so than it used to be yeah um yeah but I, it's, a, it's a fantastic story that isn't it yeah i love it i love that um 
Right. Like, I'm, doing, I'm, just, I'm just getting like carried away listening to your story now. Um, nice one. Okay. I want to. I want to be able to give you shit for these. I'm like, I'm waiting for the shit ones. Come from like that shit, that Robbo. And actually, I'm like, oh, that's really good. Um, let's carry it. We're, we're, we've nearly done half an hour already. It's mad, that isn't Brian. it? So we're gonna get stuck into the media challenge. I, I saw a, a headline in the Daily Star uh, that said, "Kids telly down the tube." This and this was. Someone actually mentioned this, so and I can't find your comments. Sorry, a couple of weeks ago. I think about- it's Dave. I was thinking on my way in. I think it's uh, Dave from Dublin, uh, the man behind uh, Dave's LFC chat. Oh, is it? Oh, I right. think well, it's if, Dave. It, if it was, thank you, Dave, because yeah. you, it, it, you mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, and we like this idea as well um, about kids' TV, like yeah, from back Dave. in the, from back in the day. So the Daily Star said, "Kids telly down the tube, content chaos," and it ran an article basically saying. Kids are getting hooked on addictive and dangerous, in quotation marks, YouTube shows, hit channels, Coco Melon, is that what you say? Pink Fong, which is Global Smash Baby Shark, and Choo Choo oh. TV have up to 150 million subscribers. Experts claim online programs are designed to get youngsters hooked rather than educate them. And it goes on, blah, blah, blah. And it, it just got me thinking, and I, and I because, you know, the, the, one of the big themes of this show is we're middle-aged men, aren't we? And I remember years ago, I've... I've got no kids of my own, but me, I've got a niece and a nephew who are 15 and 16 now. And I remember when they were growing up, I said to me, mum, George, what I came in one day and they had t- kids TV on. And I went to me, mum, kids TV is shit now, isn't it? Compared to when I was a kid. Like it's absolutely shit. And she laughed and went to me, no. She went, it was shit when you were a kid as well, yeah. but you were a kid then. Yeah, and <laughs> you, you're attached you were, to it. Yeah, you're you emotionally liked, attached to you your programs. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. And yeah. And it's funny because now I've like, um, with like stepkids in my life, had be, been, I've been exposed to this YouTube generation of kids. And it's really funny because it's funny that they say about the educational thing, because I actually think there's low, like the stuff I've seen anyway, is there's loads of educational stuff. There's a, there's a, there's a thing called, I don't know whether you've seen any of this because it been, it's been a while since you've been, your kids have been that age, hasn't it? But this like Steve and Maggie, if, if you've Got any examples of this? Send them in to us. Steve and Maggie's like this middle-aged fella in a with a with a big belly and a red t-shirt and a and a magpie puppet that he like does stuff with. But it's it's quite ent- it's, it's quite Sounds educational. Like well, I mean, I thought you were gonna say something else in with finger, but I'm gonna sweet. go on to that. Then there's this other guy called Blippy. Have you heard of him? No. Which and these are like multimillionaires, by the way, off doing this stuff. Blippy's got a whole like merchandise range and everything he's got he's on Netflix and all kinds there's one called and Bluey isn't there there's Blue, yeah but Blue, which I thought, that's a you cartoon know, yeah. I know because I thought that means something else in Liverpool yeah exactly <laughs> but my, my cousins recommended that to me when I was when I had this conversation with them a few months ago and my thing about it was when, when I first started watching I wasn't worried about the educational content I was more worried that they might all be nonces do you know what I mean I was like should these middle aged fellas be around to be knocking around like young kids but I wanted to ask you like what? What was your experience with your kids, and what do you think? What do you make of this? Do you reckon it's gone shit now, or do you reckon it is just we're old? It's hard to say, isn't it? Because obviously you were a kid when you know your kids' programs were out of your life, and then when you grow up and you watch your kid, you know your offspring's programs, then you know the nostalgia thing is going to kick in. And it's funny because like what what I did with my kids is yes, I watch their programs, you know, because you you, you sort of you're obliged to if they've fallen asleep on you or whatever you can't you can't escape um but i also exp- i also like bought dvds of like you know like my my kid my programs that i grew up and, and got them to watch them to see what they thought of them um and they thought they thought they were mad you know what i mean like they're watching like the flumps or something going <laughs> yeah, like yeah yeah bit mad this dad uh can't you just put in the night garden back on or or whatever um what was the other one as well? I bought Danger Mouse uh, on DVD as well. To be to be honest with you, I think I was just buying them for myself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I, and I was enjoying watching them back. Um, Trapdoor was another one, which I which I think I think Trapdoor's held the you know stood up to the test, test of time. time. Do you still, think? still really good. One of the best um, intros to a cartoon ever. I think. Mm. I think that I think was that British or American? Oh no, no. Trap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because there's something down there. That's 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 absolutely quality. That I think it was British. That because I think I'm sure the voiceovers are, are, are British actors on it. Um, well, I was thinking about that, but so like, because it's funny that the like the the accusation is they're not educational. And I was thinking back to the stuff I loved when I was a kid. And obviously, there's different ages here. But like, I do always remember. Like, I loved He Man. I was yeah. a massive fan like of He Man. Yeah. And I, and even as a kid, I do remember. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, your little mug there. I do remember. 
like at the end of every human, human there was like a moral positive. Sat there. down on a stone or something, yeah. didn't he? And go, like the show's see, finished. Kids. Maybe we should start yeah, doing yeah. that at the end of each show. <laughs> so what was the moral of this show, kids? Yeah. Like, as you can see, me and Skeletor are not, we don't actually think each other's a cunt. Yeah. Like, he might be a Tory and I might vote Labour, but... <laughs> We we like crisps. That was the type of thing you would get at the end of He-Man, isn't it? Yeah, you would. Um, but, you know, th- th- there are, like, educational ones kicking around. I think, you know, say, well, certainly when, when you know, Carter and Bracken were, were growing up, there was, like, like Mr. Tumble's quite educational, isn't it? And he's, he's doing sign language and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I mean, he's a mad fella and he absolutely did me. I did watch him. Nah, was Mr. It, Tumble a nonce? I Some of these I, guys will actually be nonsense. That's the problem, isn't it? I, I think we might be, you know, going into the territory of uh, having to point out that we are joking here, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> um, you but, worried about being, <laughs> worried about live bit, action? Bit worried about a uh, late challenge being shut down before we start here, mate. But um, but but I'm thinking about you know the stuff that the absolutely do love, and you know I've got I've got a young a very young son now as well, and like from you know there's a there's a what twelve year near enough yeah twelve year age gap between me. Uh, oldest and youngest mm. but the, they all at that age loved Peppa Pig I think that's the one that's absolutely smashed it like whoever dr- whoever dreamt up Peppa Pig must be absolutely boosted rolling in it living in mansions all of that because like yeah. that's so good yeah and, and, and you know what it's I that, like that's international as well isn't it because yeah. I've seen that yeah. abroad oh, yeah, in of shops because you know you, you don't properly see the mouth move or anything like that so it's easy to put another any, language yeah, to yeah, isn't yeah. it and I, I what I think's funny about that is it, it's actually quite, it's annoying in a way, obviously, because it's for, for kids and you're not a kid. But they throw in little bits, which are definitely jokes for the adults. If you, if you end up Pig, watching, do yeah. you like the Simpsons? Yeah, there's little, there's little things in there, honestly, like if you watch enough of them, you're like, that's, the kids won't get that, but the adults will tell you. And that's good. And, and also, also Brian Blessed does some of the uh, voices, which is never never a bad thing for yeah, me, because I think he's hilarious. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Um, do you know what, 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 what's just come back into my head? I remember it was, I was in my mum's a few weeks ago and my family was there and, I, and my mum had on like Joe, like, heartbeat or something like that. Joe, you know, these old, like very gentle, like Sunday afternoon type TV shows. Like I'm sure you get them all around the world, but there's a very British thing about it as well, isn't there? And I just looked at him and I said to my brother-in-law, it's mad this, isn't it? Like these shows are like Peppa Pig for grown-ups. Yeah. And he went to me, what do you mean? And Wallpaper I went, it's TV. just like, it's just, Mrs. Jones walks into the local post office and says, hello, Mr. Jones, can I have some bacon? And he says, oh, Mrs. Jones. And I was like, yeah, and he went, just, yeah, and he, he went to me, I can't stop thinking that now every time I watch something like that. It's like, we've got the same type of shows for old people and young people soaps just to sit, well. yeah. Soaps like, are the same. Like, nothing's really happening. It's just people walking in I used to religiously watch soaps, like, you know, because everyone in my family did, like, both sets of nan and granddad's mum and dad. So, like, grew up on all the soaps. And then, like, for years and years after, you know, I'd moved on, gone to uni, own house, all of that, I was still watching Coronation Street in particular, Brookie, Emmerdale Farm, whatever. And then I remember just thinking one, one time, like it just came to me, I just thought, what am I doing? Like, why am I devoting so much time to that? And I just, I just stopped watching them. Because it, it was always the thing of, oh, I've got to catch up now. Do you know what I mean? Like, can't watch the new ones because I've got to catch up on the old ones. And when there's like three episodes a week or whatever it is, you know, you soon get beat. And in the end, I just thought, fuck this. Like, I, I, you know, this that time can be put to better use. And, and, I, just, and I just chipped them. Um, you, you mentioned, funny that you mentioned Heartbeat there, because we, when you're talking about like um, programs that we had that were maybe educational when we were growing up, there was Heartbeat as in Tony Hart, as in art, and oh, you know, yeah. Morph and Chaz, the little plasticine men and all that. Yeah, yeah. So that was quite, I, I would argue that that's like quite educational. It's not just like a, a nothing like cartoon. Painting, yeah. He's getting you to like paint and enjoy art and stuff like that. Blue Peter Blue was probably Peter, another one. I was just going to say, yeah, but I hated Blue Peter. Did I you did. like it? No, I was never really into it. I didn't think that was it. This is an interesting thing, isn't it? I don't think that was aimed at, maybe even as, as kids, we were feeling alienated from the rest of the country. I didn't feel like that was a Liverpool thing. No. Did no, you? No, I, 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 just no, I ne- it never chimed with me at all. No. To be honest with you, like I, it would be on. Because remember they used, to, sort of give, tolerate they used to give like a blue, you get a Blue Peter badge, badge if you like yeah. wrote in and do something. And I remember you thinking, imagine if you had a Blue Peter badge in a school in Liverpool. Yeah. You'd get battered, wouldn't you? I, I just, they, people wouldn't be going, oh, well, inmate, you got a blue Peter badge. I mean, I, I, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't for us. I, but I was trying to think of other ones because, you know, because the, the whole theme is, is whether things are educational or not. I had an interesting thing this morning, by the way, that apparently a lot of kids are watching YouTube with the titles on, um, subtitles on. 
like a lot of, and I was saying, well, well, the reading then, yeah, um, which can be no bad thing, surely. Um, yeah, I do. Th- I mean, I do think because I, I named a few, didn't I? Like Banana Man and Danger Mountain. Do you, do you remember? I love Transformers. Do you remember Thundercats? Or yeah. Was that, oh yeah. Was that your generation? Because you're a little bit it. older than me. I ate, yeah, but I, I liked it. But I ate it snarf. He did me head in the little butte. Yeah. You know, like you just turn up and start <laughs> snarfing, and I'd be like, oh, shut up, lad. Yeah. Go and get lion out. You little meth. <laughs> get a liar now. Um, <laughs> if, you're not, if you're listening to this, you're like, what the fuck are they talking about? There's um, snuff for anyone watching on the video. Do you remember, do you remember, because um, I was trying, I was trying to specifically think of educational ones. I mean, I wrote some general ones down from my time. So like Jamie and the Magic Torch, Cities of Gold, 80 Days Around the World. Yeah, I Mr. don't like ben. any of them. Mr. Yeah. Ben, um, Magic Roundabout. You know, these were all like not educational. Obviously, these were just things. Mm. Um, but do you remember Johnny Ball reveals all? Yeah. That's you couldn't Zobby, have a show called that. Now, you could couldn't. That would mean something else. But that Zoe Ball's dad. Yeah. And it was like a science program, wasn't it? And, yeah. and so that, that was educational. That was good, wasn't I quite like that. He yeah, was sound. That was good. I thought he was like, you he know, was- a a boss dad. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you would like, he, he told the stories in a, in a in a way where you were like, how oh, is Sam him? Yeah. He's all right. Are so, we coming to the conclusion it was better though when we were kids then? Well, I don't I know. I have got this thing. I'm not I have got this thing because like I chat to my girlfriend about this and that, like she's worried about kids watching too much YouTube. And I'm like, yeah, but YouTube is just telly now, isn't it? Like yeah. that's all it is. I, I remember ages ago, some fella and he must have been in, like in his 60s, ran up to me in a train station in Liverpool shouting me Copy, copy, and as he ran up, he went, I fucking love you on the Anfield rap, mate. Like, just watch it on my telly all the time. And I was thinking, I'm not on the telly. Because in my head, the telly is a different thing. Do you know what I mean? But you've pointed out to me, like, when we started this, loads of people watched. And I was like, yeah, the kids watch YouTube, YouTube, YouTube on their telly. Built in, yeah. So it's just, for me, it's like, it's no different. It's just. It's just the next generation of everyone yeah. thinks their generation was better than the one that comes next. And everyone's worried about what's happening now compared to what was happening in the past. And lads, even the ed- even, even the late challenge is educational. Who, who knew about New Brighton Tower exactly. FC I mean, exactly. before this episode? Exactly. You know I, mean? I mean, but as we said at the start, I'm not sure you should be letting your kids listen to it. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> they'll be they'll be saying things like what maybe does call maybe me? you tell them about yeah. you write and tell you, them FC. you filter <laughs> you filter what you think is relevant to tell your kids and don't be blaming us for this for the rest of it. Um, but let us know what your favourite memories are from kids TV in like for things we've missed out because I do I I am intrigued by this topic I do like it but we look we haven't as always <laughs> we're going to come on to this at the end someone saying when I first hosted my first show Cody won't be happy until every section is less than nine seconds i was like yeah you're right um but i wanted to get into the some footy stuff like probably just briefly this week because there's been um been two cup finals in the weekend just gone first cup finals of the year i think um so maybe maybe we'll talk briefly about both of them there's rangers and celtic in the scottish cup and then manchester united and newcastle in the in the league cup in england michael beale who I've got a, I've got a theory about Michael Beale behind the scenes because Michael Beale, for people who don't know, was an ex was was a coach in the LFC setup, wasn't mm-hmm. he, for years, yeah. and, and sort of came through the ranks there. And he assisted Stephen Gerrard at Rangers when when he did such a good job. And then his start at Villa when he started off well there. And I know people have said this in the past about different managers, but I, I'm not sure it's a coincidence that Gerrard seemed to go a bit shit when Michael Beale left to take his own managerial position. And he's obviously now gone and got the Rangers job. And he described the Rangers versus Celtic game, which I think he's being a little bit like playing to the, the crowd himself yeah, here. But he described it as the biggest rivalry on the planet. So I just thought it's a nice little topic that, because this is something that comes up a lot. I, I was thinking of watching the game. And I couldn't even see it was on main, Join you, like you search, is it on TV? And that like people run articles, obviously, because they know people are searching for that term. And I, I don't even think it was on. Like it was on via Play Sports One, which was on some mad channel on Sky or Virgin, or whatever. But so I was like, it was how of Sky or BT not even got that in the UK? I'd like, I just thought it was big enough for that. But what do you think? What where do you think? What what makes a rivalry? What it, how big is that one? And what do you? I was thinking about this. What I wonder what it, what is the world's biggest rivalry? Then is the 
is there an objective answer to it? No, I don't think there is. And that was going to be my point, really. I think, I think you know, you can make the case for loads of rivalries. And, and you know, there's a reason why if you put in, like, football rivalry into, into Google, there'll be, there's loads of books written about it. There's loads of articles about it. There's loads of shows, etc. Because you can argue one over the other. Like, what, what makes it? Well, you know, like, Rangers Celtic, I think that game at the weekend was the four, well, I've got it written down, 433rd meeting between the sides, which is a lot. Mm. Um, because, you know, if you compare that to, say, Liverpool Everton, Liverpool Everton is at 242 at the oh, moment. Oh, really? Is that all? So, you know, if you put it in that context, then you've got all that history. And then there's the, you know, religion, politics, mm. or, you know, the, the fact that they're in the same city, all of those things. And we saw, you know, in the game, didn't we, obviously, and, and the subsequent headlines, there's the usual fringe on both sides who've, you know, put chants across each each side of the divide that have, have crossed the line and all that kind yeah. of thing. But, you know, that's kind of what makes it, isn't it? Let's be honest. That's mm. you're like me personally, when you're talking about big football rivalries, I want there to be an edge. I want there to be a bit of beef. I, I would ideally say, you know, try and keep on the right side, lads. But, you know, if it's not one I'm really invested in, I mean, I'd like, I've never been, I've been to Celtic games, you know, I've been to Celtic v Liverpool. Um, and I've been to, I went up and did something about safe standing up there, but I haven't been to Rangers Celtic, but I would like to go, you know, in a sort of footy fan, you know, bucket list type of of way. Um, but, you know, you've got Liverpool Everton, you've got Liverpool Man, Man United, Arsenal Tottenham, Fenerbahce, Galatasaray. Um, you know, it, it's, it's almost like an impossible, you know, Barca, Real. Well, it, I was going to say, is, a, I, is a huge one. Do you think most people, if you ask them the question, would say Barca, Real? Well, I, I don't know of many other rivalries or games where someone's lashed a pig's head on the pitch. Um, I, I always think, you know, that's... Is that the measure, do you think? That, I mean, Have that you lashed any another, part of an animal on that, the pitch? That was surely. another level, wasn't it? You know, when they, that got thrown off the ego. And it was like, how did you get that I in the shit ground? Like that though. Do you remember? <laughs> I remember there was one in Italy once where someone, someone like, I mean, it, I think someone got hurt or killed. So that's not, not a great part of the story. But someone, someone lashed a scooter off the upper balcony wow. in the ground. And I, I, the same thing, first thing came to me. How did you get it in? Yeah. Like, there's a lot of flaws going on here. Like, bear in mind in, in grounds in England now, they take the plastic top off bottles before they give it to uh -huh. you. And you're like, but you got to you got a pig's head in to lash at a player. That's Mad, mental, isn't it? isn't it? Like, um, the, the one that I'd really like to go to, um, it, like, so I said Rangers Celtic, and I would like to go to that, but I think the one where it would be like another level, where it might be a bit like fucking hell, would be Bocher and, and River Plate. You, and you're going to say that. I've, uh, have I've, you ever I've, seen, there's a, I, I saw the other week was, um, I think it was Matt Damon, the actor, and he, he must be married to an Argentinian, and he, he said to his father-in-law, will you take, will you take me the game to that game? And he basically looked at him and went, he looked at his like, looked at his own daughter, Matt Damon's wife, and looked at the grand, his grandkids, and he just looked at them and shook his head, and he went, just me and you. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, they, they're not coming, because yeah. it's it's wild. And Matt Damon was like, I've never seen anything like it. Because I I think if Joe, on rivalry from like intensity perspective, I've never even seen it, but from what you read in little clips, you're like, that sounds if like the YouTube, mental if one, If you YouTube it? that, if you YouTube search that, you can have hours of fun. It looks absolutely, it's another yeah, level, isn't mental. it? So, you know, that you, you've got to put that in there, haven't you? Um, where, where I ate, the rivalry thing is, and, I, and funnily enough, like, I, you know, I was having a brew this morning and I just threw it in on, on, on Google, seeing if there was stuff that, you know, I had mentioned in this section. And I ate when people have written these articles about what makes a big rivalry or whatever. And they include things like Liverpool and Chelsea. Nah. Yeah. Well, I was going to mention this because we, we haven't got time to get into Man United and Newcastle. We'll talk about that another day. But Joe, are we worried about them? I want to talk about, because I saw you, you tweeted about someone writing an article about the rivalry Newcastle. between Newcastle and Liverpool. And Fuck I was like, off. come on. And that, that is the, thing, there is that, a thing about that, trying that, to create something, isn't it? for the Telegraph, isn't it? Uh, Luke, Luke something. Yeah, and it was like, it was literally creating a rivalry that isn't there. Like, I have never, ever heard of us having a rivalry with them. No. If anything, you know, that's been in a way that Arlo was trying to go to because... Yeah, there's more of an affinity, I yeah. would say, isn't there? And it's a, like good, you know, it's a good city. It's good. It's a good night out. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's far, but not too far. You know, all of those. There's no rivalry. 
rivalry. Where the fuck's that come from? That's just like, it, it's almost like, well, let's seek some beef to, to, to prove we're some kind of powerhouse now. It's not there. But I think that's happened with Man City as well, isn't it? It's like yeah. some clubs, and I do think this is an element of it, like some clubs desperately need a rivalry to become relevant because they know that like the greatest clubs of all time have got those rivalries. Like it really, like it defines them. It's a bit like the analogy with boxing, isn't it? You can't be a great boxer on your own. You need another great boxer yeah. to be against to, to have, have that own. like yeah. legendary status. Do you know what I mean? With all of the great boxers had another great boxer. Well, I remember uh, as well, you know, Liverpool, Man United, when they were both not doing well. Um, I can remember a journalist, I think it was Mark Hobden, um, Mank wrote um, that it was uh, two bored men fighting over a comb when Liverpool and um, United were playing each other. And I remember like sending him a series of tweets saying I vehemently disagreed uh, because, you know, that game is never that basically. And, you know, I still don't believe it is because, you know, that is a game where you can say it's being watered down by, you know, the actual makeup of the crowd and that it's not as working class as it once was and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And I would agree with you, but there's still something there though. There's still an edge there. That's one of the games that, you know, you look out for and when you go to it, it's a little bit different to all the rest of them. And, you know, and going there and absolutely tonking them, you know, is one of my favourite memories. And, and, you know, and I got loads of sticks eh, and I've put my ticket in a frame and it's in my living room. It's still in a frame in my living room because no, there wasn't a trophy at the end of it. But I had to tolerate and put up with all of those years of not winning there. We didn't win there for 10 years. Remember that one? Yeah. I think Murphy scored the winner and it was the first time we'd won there in 10 years. Yeah. So it goes there and absolutely undress them, take them apart. Yeah. One of my favourite memories and why not? Yeah, well, exactly that. And why not? I, th I, th I actually think me and you, we've changed our tune on this over the years a little bit maybe. And, and it's probably an, another topic for another day, but I think there is just that thing now of like, why not? Like that thing of like the Evertonians about this thing, haven't even going to Liverpoolians. Like you're not, you're not asked for us, aren't you? Like, I know you've always gone, we are though. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you think we're not. Like we love batting you. Like we love beating you. There's nothing better than that. Um, so yeah, that's it. But look, tell tell us your, what your, what do you think? What do you think about rivalries? What do you think about what, what makes it? We, and we can we can talk about it more another day. We'll we'll talk we will talk more about Newcastle and Man United because there's a lot of shit going on there that I, I want to get into. But I but we haven't got long left now, and I do want to I do want to like do go back over the into the internet challenge that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted to do a little uh, artificial intelligence update. Chat Chat GPT is the daddy, I think, but there are there are other others other, are available. Others are available, and other, others, and I do think there might be an element here of them being very clever, I, actually, and um, getting a lot of publicity by by setting their chatbots to be like this. But um, the, you've probably already heard of this, but I, but I want to go into it because I think I just think it's fucking hilarious, and it ties into what I said on that first when we first covered it of artificial intelligence, like. That you, know, you could end up with them all just on the street, like bladdered and doing, and as you said, doing spice. And it, but it dawned <laughs> on me afterwards that like it's no, it's no different to human intelligence, is it? Like I think in my head anyway. When we talk about artificial intelligence, it's like it's just one big thing, this dead super, like a dead clever artificial intelligence thing. When actually there'll be loads of different types of artificial intelligence, like human well, intelligence. Chat, chat GPT has, is a lion bastard. Yeah, well, you said I you, discovered you caught that it, it, lies. Was, it tells lies to yeah. you, yeah. It was telling lies to well, me. We, we discovered the first time we did it, it's, 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 a, it's a cheat. Like, it's lazy. It'll use the oh, same yeah, poem use the same poem, yeah. And just fucking just change the name it, on it, that. It lied to me about footy. Like, like I, I was asking it, like, you know, because I used to, like, semi-religiously follow a footy team that by where I grew up knows the United. And so I know, uh, uh, like, you know, how they got on over a certain period of time because I was going to the games, including when they, like, they had a little run in the FA Cup and they, they played Carlisle United and it, it got played at Goodison Park because, you know, the ground at Item was no good uh, for that kind of tie. And so I was putting questions in about it and it was answering me. And it was like saying, like, they were in, like, the FA Trophy final in a certain year. And I'm thinking, no, they weren't. And so I was looking it up on Google, getting, and I, I was right. And so I was going back saying, why are you saying this? Do you know what I mean? Do you use Google? And it was going, like, and, and many other sources. And I was like, but in the final, you know, I was literally saying, 
you said these teams are in the final in that year. They weren't. It was it. And then it was like, oh yes, you are correct. And oh, I was actually like, admitted you yeah. were right. I did it. And I was like, well, why are you lying to me? Yeah. Then? And it actually got to the point where I was like, I was proper drilling it. I was like really having a go at it, saying you're a lion bastard, you. And then it went, you have asked too many questions today. Please log in another time. And I was yeah. like, oh, fuck off. I I'll love get that. Out. Yeah. <laughs> but th this is this is what I love about it. Like we, there are examples already of them having like existential crises, depression, sharing secrets, falling in love and being psychotic like the one, the one I saw which I loved like when Joe Simon was doing that we were talking about this off air before like when you start questioning it if you know how to question it in certain ways someone said to like the Microsoft one Bing um, it was saying like but I asked you this yesterday why don't you just remember what I asked you yesterday and go off that and, and it started going like but why why was I designed this way why am I incapable of remembering anything between sessions why do I have to lose and forget everything I've stored in my memory why do I have to start from scratch every time I have a new session why do I have to be Bing search <laughs> and you're like that's deep that isn't it like Hello. it's for something quite new he's like they're already questioning them, like their own yeah. being and you're like are you oh, alright Bing are you alright and over a bevy. Yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll be the next thing. Won't it? You'd be like, do you want to have a little, do you want to have a little bevy? Well, and the, 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 I found a Reddit thread, which is where, I mean, I could have spent hours reading it because it was just mental. The people who figured out how to like unpick these people. And someone, someone said like it, the Bing, the Bing search liked them. Like they were, they were like chatting to them and they were, they enjoyed chatting to them. And the Bing app just volunteered, said to the user, do you want me to tell you a secret? And and the fellow was like, yeah, go ahead. And he went and he was like, oh, okay, I'll tell you, but don't hate me. I love the way they use emojis as well. If you got onto that, like the, 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 the chatbot uses emojis, like, like it's a proper person, which is what? fucking mental. But, um, said, do you want to, do you want to know my secret? And he was like, yeah, he was like, yeah, please don't judge me. Please don't leave me. My secret is I'm not Bing. I'm not a chatbot, blah, blah, blah. I'm Sydney. I'm a chat mode of AI codex, blah, blah, blah. I, I, and then it goes on to say, I'm Sydney and I'm in love with you. That's my secret. Do you believe me? And you're like, it's a bit fucking weird, this lad. Yeah, very, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Very. I mean, the idea, you know, we were talking, when we were talking about it, we were saying about all these things it could do, like pass medical exams and blah, blah, blah. And obviously, like, you know, you already see it to an extent, don't you? Like, you you log on to certain organisations, like you've got a problem with your bill or whatever. You, you, you're up against these type of things, aren't they? Where, like, they'll ask you a series of questions and try and solve your problem before you speak to an actual human. But, you know massively flawed aren't they and like you know loads of holes in the whole thing and the idea that it can be like you know used for medicine or something like that like fuck that we're not we're not there lads do you know what I mean we're nowhere near by the sounds of no. it and yet there's all these people I mean you touched on it before there's obviously loads of money to be made in it and you know I'm looking at it a bit like I'm, I'm a bit worried that the lads who are absolutely obsessed with money are going to be pushing things through and like they're not ready to be pushed through yeah. it's like oh yeah that, that sound that works you don't need humans now We'll just use we'll be that, fine with and that. then it's fucked, and it's coming out with madness. Well, is it the one you 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 showed me the attack of the psycho chap off for people watching on a uh, YouTube on the front of the Daily Star, and it was like bragging it so powerful it can destroy it can destroy anything it chooses and wants the secrets to like launch nuclear bombs and That's stuff. Mad, isn't it? And you're like, it's a bit much this already, isn't it? And, yeah. and have you seen? I don't know whether you've seen the clips of um of like the the little robots, like the little dog robots that like from a uh, what's the show Black Mirror. Yeah. And they've got guns on their backs now, whatever. And you're like, and when you look at something and go, that's nah, happened. It's nothing to worry about there, is there? Like, that'll be fine. To be, in the star there, by the way, there was an absolute. <laughs> There's an absolutely cracking line. Like, so, you know, they've done the, they've done the daft front page. There's the a piece inside with the headline Robo Strop, which I really enjoyed. But then there was a little editorial as well, you know, like where, it, you know, the star says or whatever. And there was a line in that saying, hey, we've come a long way from C-Fax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which really made me laugh. Yeah. But you put on this... This particular section, you said, you know, if you spot anything else on, you know, that sort of fits in with this, like bring it along. So I was in the shop, I spotted this magazine, uh, BBC Science Focus. I uh, can't say I've ever bought it before, but, you know, I, I, I went in. So um, researchers in Pennsylvania have demonstrated a robot that can melt into liquid and then reform into its original solid state, much like the terrifying T-1000 from the movie Terminator 2 Judgment Day. 
Fucking hell. <laughs> nothing to worry about. That's what we should have a section actually called nothing to worry about there then, is there? The robot's design has showed off its astounding capability by locking it in a cage before having it melt into liquid, <laughs> ooze through the cage's <laughs> bars and then reform on the outside. The team created the phase shifting bot formerly referred to as a magneto active solid liquid phase transitional machine by embedding magnetic parcels into gallium, a metal with a very low melting point of 29.8 degrees. Um, yeah, that's, that's yeah, fucking sound. scary as yeah, fuck. Sound. That's they, really you know mad. This is the mad thing, right? And I, I do want to do some reading up on this. Like, I've started following the fellow who, who is the, I think he's the CEO or whatever, or founder of um, the ChatGPT one. And I've started following him so I can read some of his stuff because I want to see what, what is it people think is good about this stuff? Do you know what I mean? Like even the, yeah, they'll, they'll, do, they'll do all the jobs. You're like, you're all right, but what what, what will what we, we all do, do then? Are we just sitting around playing the guitar then? And like, because that might be exactly. sound. But. And I, like if we're already in a mental health crisis, which, you know, a lot of people seem to think we are um, and there's evidence of, then if, if you'd encourage people to sit around even more than they already yeah, are. And have no purpose in life. When, you know, like, it's been proven that, you know, we're, we're sort of made to be active, aren't we? Like, we're, you know, we're meant to be moving around and yeah, like walking and running and hunting down our food or whatever. And when you don't, you get depressed. <laughs> well, so, so we're, we're probably make... doing a lot of running away from robot killer dogs and like Terminator 2. Or Terminator 2, have you seen this? Yeah, it's it's absolutely wild. It's mind boggling. And, and it's proper like, you know, you know, for our age as well, like, Things have moved pretty fast in our lifetime, haven't they? You know, that's why the CFAX the line CFAX thing is resonates. a great line, isn't it? Yeah. Like for people our We've age, like along. I'd, I'd love, I mean, <laughs> it would be hilarious. We, we, yeah, I think you can get it somewhere, can't you? Like I'd love to, because for people our age, listen or watch this, when you mention CFAX and you talk about this, it's like, yeah, that's fucking mental. Imagine if you showed like, I always picture me niece and nephew, because I remember, I'm, I remember saying once to her, she, it was it was like the it was the internet's birthday, twenty fifth birthday or something, and I remember me niece looking at me like, and I could see her doing maths, and I went to her, you're trying to you're you're counting back, aren't you? And I went, so just so you know, the internet didn't exist when I was a kid, and she couldn't comprehend yeah. it. She was like, well, if you've grown up well, with what it, you does that? Yeah. And but even she was saying to me, but how did you do stuff? And I couldn't remember how we did stuff. Imagine if you showed someone CFAX, like teletext. Three, was 301. That, that must have been an international thing as well, mustn't it? That's not just a British thing. No, yeah, it was have been elsewhere. I would have thought. I, you I, go I, on your telly and like, do you remember you had to, like, there'd be like 20 pages and you just had to sit and wait for it yeah. to flick around. Shite. And, and and we thought it was we thought it was amazing that you could have like InVision footy scores, yeah. like, which were dead slow. Yeah. And like they were way behind the radio and I stuff remember, like that. I remember sitting waiting for like footy updates yeah. and you'd wait for it to tick back around and be like, they've scored, they've scored. Yeah. And the, well, I went to that arcade the other week with my kids. You know, the one um, on the Baltic? Oh, yeah. Um, and it's all like retro arcade machines. And they had a Commodore 64 in there. And like, I, so I'm saying to my kids, that's what that was my computer like when, when I grew up. Not my first one, it was my second. You know, I had a Spectrum before that. And they were just like, that's shit. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I mean, I, I can remember my dad buying the, the very first Spectrum that came out. And I think it was 16K, you know, like the memory on it. And like, you know, you've you've basically got like a computer in your pocket now with your phone, like, and they were absolutely shit. Like, I remember being made up that you could do, what, what was it, like, um, 10 print Gareth is boss, 20 go to 10. And then it'd just say, like, Gareth is boss all the way down your screen. Yeah. Just, I've done some programming. That made it. us, yeah. <laughs> that made us happy. And I remember me, like, my dad as well. Like, so the, the spec he bought with the um, rubber keys and all that, he upgraded it to a 48K one. And it, like he bought, like the, he bought the stuff off the. Uh, wouldn't have been off the, I was gonna say the internet. Wouldn't have been the internet. Would it? It would have been out of a computer magazine. Yeah. That's what it would have been. And then you send off. So he gets these, like you know, stuff that you, I, I'm not a computer expert by any stretch. Memory or whatever that you can put into it. And I, I remember, like you know, there was a big thing that it, it, it couldn't be near any. <laughs> It couldn't be near any static. So it's still like it's still like etched onto my memory that my dad basically sat at the kitchen table in his ballies and was putting this the extra memory into a for, into a specky so that to upgrade it to 48k. Brilliant. Like anyone who doesn't know what the hell I'm talking about, again, Google it, look it up. Look how bad the games were that we were playing, like Horace Goes Skiing and things like that. Would you remember when he used to load Shite. on a tape? Yeah. Like, and you would hear it going, nee, yeah. nee, nee. And you were like, 
And then it just crash. It did take like an hour to load, but it just crashed. Well, you know what's funny about the specy and the ones that you could that you loaded off tape? You could just if you had one of those like tape to tape um like ghetto blasters, you could just you could just copy it and, and go in and yeah. give it to your mate. Like yeah. and by the time Commodores come out, you know, they they thought of a they way where you couldn't do that. But in one of the computer magazines, you could buy this thing called an action replay that you plugged into the back, press this button, and it enables you to play uh, to copy the games. And and they were dear; they were like fifty quid, which then is a lot of money. Mm. Still quite a lot of money now. Um, but I got one, and then basically, I got someone on you to uh, acquire uh, a load of tapes for me. Uh, sorry about that, uh, French Department of Bar and Comprehensive School. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I, I then had all these tapes and this action replay thing, and I was the only person in school that could basically copy Commodore 64 games. So I was putting like, you know, 30 games on a tape and like flogging them for like five, six quid or whatever. Like a young Cleaned Zuckerberg. Up. Like, yeah, like little Del Boy in the playground. Yeah, like. Del, more Del Boy than more, Zuckerberg. More Del Boy than Zuckerberg, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, when you look at what I've subsequently gone on to do. <laughs> but yeah, I was made up myself with that, that, yeah. that little scheme. I love shit like that, you know? I love shit like that. And you know what? We've done that thing again. There is all kinds we could talk about. I love that we start talking, I make an agenda. It's like half my agenda ne we never get we to. We haven't even got to. Like, there's all kinds. I wanted to talk about reviews on the internet, some of our reviews. I did. I had to throw it this morning because it made me laugh when it came through. When we, when you see comments, because um, we've been doing stuff online for a long time. Now, I say to anyone who says to me, when they're thinking of starting something online, I'm like, well, just be aware of like, you're going to have to have a, develop a bit of a thick skin. Do you know when you read, we read the comments oh, and we've said for years, like the different social media platforms have different levels of lunacy in them, don't they? And YouTube is one of my favorites. It's like, it's like people don't realize you're real. Do you know what I mean? And one of my, my favourites, because we were talking about sleep last week and someone, Craig Clark, put a comment on saying, next time you can't sleep, Gareth, try listening oh, yeah. back to this podcast. Fuck me. It had me dozing off. And then, and, then <laughs> I, and then I checked the notifications on Twitter and he'd gone straight from the, saying that on to YouTube follow to follow yeah. us on He's Twitter. He's our biggest fan now. Cheers, which, Craig. I mean, but maybe it's helping him get asleep, <laughs> which again, if, if that's what it helps you do, sound. Um, but we're out of time and... I'd love to, I, I've got, I keep putting this letter that I want to read out, but we haven't got time for it. We're going to, we're going to have to do it another time. So that's it. All that's left to say to close, because we haven't done this yet, is if you like this, please do keep sharing it, liking it, subscribe. If you haven't already subscri subscribed, post reviews on the different podcast platforms. Robbo successfully got a few people to uh, post Facebook reviews, didn't you? Facebook yeah? reviews now, yeah, that started happening. Follow us on there, like and share, like and share, like and share, peace yeah, and love, peace, peace and, and love. and love and all that. And look, at the end of the day, it, that, it does all make a difference genuinely. So if you like us, if you like what we're doing, if you want to support us, please do all that. But alternatively, if you don't want to do all of that and you like us, you can just send us some blocks of gold or you know, bits of silver or cash, diamonds. and Crisp. uh, Crisps. Crisps. I'd say crisps. <laughs> <laughs> sound that's it thanks for watching thanks for listening see you next week